Happy New Year. By the time you watch this video, it's gonna be 2021. But as I'm recording this, it is 30 minutes to 2021. Chris and I have decided to take the Millennial Falcon up for a New Year's Eve flight. Let's see if you can see some fireworks. Since this year was such a f***ing shit show. What? I'm making a video. <laughs> Within this terrible year, Sony released the A7S III, which is what you're seeing. So we thought, what better opportunity than to give this beast a solid old low light test because we haven't really been able to do that. You know, we've been social distancing, we haven't been doing much. And so we thought, why not take it out on the eve of 2021, give you a little three month update on how we are finding it. It's cold. Cold? Yeah, it's freezing. And late. It's way past my bedtime. This is later and colder than we've, we ever really go out. I wanna, I wanna read you something funny. 2020 goals, make, a documentary film. <laughs> Didn't do that? Probably wouldn't even get to do it this year. Host a meetup or workshop. That's all my goals for last year. In real life? In real life. <laughs> that was all my goals. So yeah, clearly didn't make any of my goals for last year happen. There's a bunch more on the list, like finishing the home renovation and um, launching our series. Didn't do that either. The home run was taking forever. This year has been crazy, so don't be bothered by everybody posting their uh, celebratory posts or their accomplishments from 2020. Don't forget, social media is a highlight reel and um, this year was hard as fuck. We did a little A7S3 GoPro shootout. Well, not really shootout. <laughs> it's not a really fair competition. No, it's not. Got my blanket preheating. Cold, so you gotta keep warm in the car. It's quarter to 12. I have a feeling we're gonna miss whatever fireworks are going on. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna do a few tests with the A7S III. I already know how well this camera performs from shooting with it over the last few months, but I kinda wanna give you guys an example. It'd be fun to test it in super low light conditions. So I'm gonna shoot a mix of 24 frames per second, probably a, a mix of 60. Always get sick on the helicopter, so I have to be like really careful about how many settings I'm changing. May or may not shoot off a couple of photos and see what that looks like. Once I've had a chance to review the footage, we'll pop back into the office and talk about this. I feel like I'm on the verge of vomiting because I have so much anxiety from the helicopter. So I had the chew gum. So I really apologize for chewing the gum. Caesar, you do is at the parting Buffalo Airfield uh, en route for a uh, downtown Phoenix flight. Uh, firing off from electric tower. We were a little bit late getting up in the air, but they're still going. So uh, happy New Year, by the way. Yeah, you too. It's like the best one for over downtown. Yeah, that's where we're headed. fireworks <laughs> classic. classic no we like we missed half of them we saw the finale it's all right you got enough right no enough for a little montage not really is this like the last failed video of 2020 yeah <laughs> it's probably a really good sum up of the stupid year yeah. so we're gonna pop back to the office we're gonna review the footage we're gonna review the photos then we're gonna talk about our thoughts on this camera so far we've had it for three months it's not gonna be like an in-depth review at all. It's just kind of like our thoughts after using it for like a couple of months. Hey, we only had it for a few months. I really think, I feel like it's been way more than three months. October. I, like, I feel like we've had that camera for six months to a year. Looks like it's been around for six months to a year. Yeah, we should hold gear. It's covered. All right, to the office. To the office. We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. Before we get into talking about this camera, I, can we just say, 2020 gave us one more kick in the arse right on the way out because we lost all of the audio from the GoPro. Of us talking inside. Of us talking inside the helicopter. So anyway, we're talking about the A7S III. It wasn't really a scientific test earlier in this video. We kind of just- science involved. Well, yeah, there Aerodynamics was. Aerodynamics flight, lift. Yep. Drag. I guess give you an update on whether it was worth the wait 
worth the money and if it's worth the hype. Nobody leaves a good review. Mm -hmm. But it's like, oh, it checks off all the boxes. It satisfies everything we wanted in a camera. Yeah, it literally checks off all of the boxes. Now I do have a couple of things that I don't like, which we'll talk about shortly, but it was very um, dark as we were up there. As you can see in the GoPro footage, that's kind of like what it looked like, like pitch black, you could see the lights, but it was very dark. But then through the back of the camera on the A7S III, like some of the shots looked like daylight. And we don't want lights on when we're in the cabin. It's like, kind of like when your mom and dad, when you were kids, you put the- you put They the, get so mad when you, you, put you turn the, the light, light on. on and they're like, turn that off, <laughs> turn that off. But it's because it ruins your night vision. As soon as you get hit with a flash or a bright light. You're just like- It ruins that night sensitivity. So what used to happen with the A7S II is we'd be shooting at night and the 24P looked amazing and then you'd switch to slow motion and it would just crumble. It just looked like trash. Not the case with this camera. The 60 frames per second, it's like a higher bit rate. We have the 42210 bit and it's 4K. So it doesn't fall apart. So I'm very happy that I can just say like, throw all of my trust in this camera, no matter what the lighting scenario. We're out in the dark garage, for example, and we need to get like nice slow motion B-roll. I know that I can boost that ISO and get a clean shot. The ISO is a weird thing about this camera though. We're shooting S-Log3, so as you boost your ISO, boost your ISO, it gets more noisy. And then as you're approaching 16,000, uh, as soon as you hit 16,000 ISO, it's just clean. So I know when I'm shooting, if I'm approaching that kind of like weird noise, like I know it's gonna be too grainy, I'll just boost all the way up to 16,000 or adjust the rest of my parameters to compensate for the amount of light, I guess, that's being exposed on the sensor. So that's something that's really awesome about this camera. I did shoot some photos with this camera during that night. Unfortunately, I suck and forgot to take it off the picture profile. I was shooting in S-Log3 for photos, which was faking out my exposure. So while it looked exposed in the back of the camera, as soon as I brought the raw files into Lightroom and it removed the profile or whatever, it was like multiple stops underexposed. So I did have to bring those images up, the exposure up in post, which did raise the noise floor of the photo, which made it look more grainy. So I think I needed to go out and do a couple more shots. Those shots are still pretty clean. Like I couldn't get anything near that with the a6400 or the a7r4. Um, before we move on to the flippy screen and the quirk that I have about it, so let's talk about the 12 megapixels. 12 megapixels? Yeah, a lot of people were making a big deal about when this camera got released that it was only 12 megapixels. People were pissed. How is this gonna be a it's camera for photographers? Not a, it's not a photo camera. It's not a photo camera. This is made for video. And the reason why it has a 12 megapixel sensor is because the pixels are bigger, which gives you just better low light performance. So 12 megapixels, I mean, a, a 4K frame is eight megapixels. Right. So I think that megapixels in and of themselves are a product of the time. If you increase the number of pixels on a sensor while leaving the size of the sensor the same, the only thing that can that can give is your pixel size. Mm -hmm. And the smaller your pixels are, the fewer photons it's collecting because it has a smaller area and there, there by definition, your noise will go up. It, everything's a trade-off. Sony's decided to make the low light beast and through that they've, decided they're gonna keep the low megapixel design. I will say though, if you're like a video person who likes to shoot photos, so long as you're not cropping a lot, this is a great photo camera. And in fact, we shot um, a lot of photos during our Cold Island trip, which you can watch the whole series, link it up here, on the A7S II. And I actually printed one of my favorite shots from the shoot, which was shot at night. And I printed it like 16 by 20 and it looks Fine. Viewing distance is a big thing too. You, yeah, you can print something massive. You can take something and blow it up the size of a billboard as long as you're looking at it from the road. But if you're up on the billboard itself looking at it, of course it's gonna look crappy. I think I have chicken in my teeth. Uh, well, yeah, I, you do. I didn't look in the well, mirror of again. Of course not. <laughs> I, I Never work. looks in the mirror. I, we shoot a video, just doesn't even look. Black shit in his teeth. Every like, other day. I boogers to... in his nose. No, I don't boogers in my nose. You still have a booger. We had the flip out screen, right? Super happy that Sony gave us the flip out screen. Oh my God. No! Uh, this, I will admit, was very difficult to get used to. We're normally used to the screens that flip from the bottom. So when you have this screen flipped all the way to the back like this, you can't flip it up. So when you're shooting like low stuff, like it has to be out to the side like this. But if you have a strap here, it kind of gets in the way. And if you're using the strap technique, which I like to do, we kind of go like this and we hold it out to get stable shot it pushes the screen. My solution is, I like to use the Peak Design strap. I have a toggle. With the quick release? With the quick release. I take the toggle like this, 
and I attach it to the um, plate oh, and leave and it there. So then it, it so then it attaches like this, which is fine. However, when you go to put this on a tripod and that toggles there, it doesn't mm -hmm. seat perfectly in the tripod, which is really sketchy. So you have to be really careful. So that is like usability wise, like my biggest pet peeve about this camera. I will say though that the, I don't need to use the strap technique as often because the in-body stabilization paired with a lens that has image stabilization as well is insane. You can have a mic on here and you can rotate the uh, screen and that's perfect. But if you're monitoring anything and you have a headphone jack in or like you have this plugged in, you can't turn the screen at all. So you're kind of, it's fixed th like this, like straight. So if your camera is low and you're monitoring something with a headphone, you can't turn this to look at the screen. So you you had to have a monitor. Though so that's like kind of like my biggest gripe about the camera. It's beefier than the A7S II. I love the record button on the top. It's like big. Some people were complaining about the menus when the camera first came out. Honestly, the menus don't matter. Like once you get familiar with them, set up your camera, you're rarely in the menus. And there's so many custom functions that can all, all be customized. Yes. And we made not only custom buttons, but also custom menus for all of the commonly used items that we use. Right, so let us know in the comments if you guys would love a video on how we have our camera set up for like optimal shooting, like what all of our custom buttons do. There's a lot of features that we actually use that aren't by default set up. I think having those at your fingertips is uh, a little bit of a workaround, a little bit of a hack, if you will. Definitely, yeah. So let us know if you guys wanna learn more about that. Two card slots, awesome. Battery is the new Z battery, so it lasts way longer than the older cameras with the smaller batteries. It takes the same battery as the A7R, so it's nice to have you know the two cameras with the same battery set up. Would I trade one for the other? No, I like to have a photo dedicated camera and a video dedicated camera. It's workflow wise, I've always wanted to have. It just makes the most sense for us. Two people shooting, it, it makes sense to have two cameras. The ability for each of those cameras to, in a pinch, do the function of the other one. Right. Like you've shot video on your A7R 4 when you need an extra angle, and you've shot photos on this when you're out shooting video and you didn't have your A7R 4 on you. Exactly. 100% this was worth the wait. Love it, excited, been using it a lot for the renovation. It's already like getting a nice coating of dust, which is a great. A nice patina. A nice little patina. First like month we had it, we were like renovating the bathroom and we had a rotary hammer and we were like carrying up ceramic tiles on the floor and the room was full of dust and we were in there with this and the and macro lens, just shards. like flying shards going everywhere we're in here with, with the camera. So and a lot of people say they'd never put their cameras in some of the situations that we have. We had one issue one time where <clears throat> we took our A7S II through lava dust in the rain. You screen afterwards, get these weird little pink or purple pixelated effects. I thought we ruined it. It, it just went back to normal. I was like, oh, I really thought that we messed our camera up. Moral of the story, don't get your cameras wet. Yeah. A happy new year. Thanks for being around. Thanks for sticking with us through a really weird ass year. Hopefully this year starts looking up and um, more videos to come. Pumped. All right. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you can notify when we post new videos. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. I think I can get the chicken out of my teeth with this tooth. Oh my God, that's not a toothpick. That's, Chris, that's a hook for an ornament. What is wrong with you? Your mother, ah! oh God, your mother spent so much money on your teeth and here you are just poking at it. Ah! I can't, I hate mouth stuff. It goes, it goes no, like I hate mouth stuff. Get away from me. It's like a tongue, it's like Ugh. a second tongue. Big bottom. Big bottom. You have the big bottom on? Yeah, I, I mean, I'll always have a big bottom on. This is what I woke up to. I woke up to her going, hey, 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 hey. That is not. It's like a woodpecker. I would never do that to you. That's what it felt like. I was like, miss, and you twitched, and my hand went into your ribs. <laughs> Fuck anyway. you. Well, it's 2021 now. 2021, happy new year. I didn't even kiss you. Oh my God, happy new year, wait. <laughs> happy new year.